Hello world, today I'm going to show you how to build a simple Android app with a button that switches to a new page and how to set up an Android device emulator using Android Studio version 1.5.1. In this tutorial I assume that you have already installed Android Studio and that you are able to write code in Java and XML. Let's begin. After opening Android Studio, click on the first button that says Start a new Android Studio project. Give your application a name, in this case we'll call it Hello World. If you like, you can change the company domain that is listed here. Check the location to where the project will be saved, and change it if you don't like what's already set there. Then click on Next. Select the SDK that you want to use for your application, and click Next. Select Blank Activity, and then click on Next. You can leave all the default names as they are, and then click on Finish. In your Application Explorer, double click on ContentMain.xml, and then drag the text that appears in the top left corner of the phone and drag it to the middle of the screen. In the properties window, find the text property and change it to say hello world. In the widgets palette, find the button, click on it and drag it over to the phone screen. And then find the text property in the properties window for the button and change the name of the button. In this case we'll use go to next page. Then in the Application Explorer, we're going to right click on App, and then we're going to navigate through the menu to New, Activity, and click on Blank Activity. Then we'll change our activity name to Second Activity, and we'll click Finish. In the Widgets palette, look for the large text widget and drag it over to the phone screen. Then in the Application Explorer, open up Strings.xml and add a new string. Give the string a name, in this case Text2, and the value of that string will be Welcome to my second page. Go back to contentsecond.xml and in the properties window look for the ID of the large text widget that you recently dragged over to the screen. Change the name of it to text2. Then look for the text property and change it to say at string slash text2. Now you'll notice the string we recently created in the XML file appears inside of our large text widget in our application explorer. Open up mainactivity.java. In the onCreate method, we need to add a button object and also give an event listener to the button so that it executes a function whenever it is clicked. In this case, we're going to have a function called go to second activity. Now we must define go to second activity. Scroll down to the bottom of the class and add the method go to second activity as you see here on the screen. Scroll back up to the top of the page. Open up the import section by clicking on the plus sign. And at the bottom we're going to import four new objects. We need to import intent, view, text view, and button. Then click on the green triangle at the top of the IDE. If you don't already have an emulator set up, you'll be prompted to set one up. Click on the button with the three dots on it. Click on the button that says create virtual device. Select the device that you want to emulate and click on next. Now you'll be asked what operating system version you want the device to have. If this is your first time setting up a device, you may need to download an image. Click on the download link for the image that you want. A window will appear with a progress bar that shows the progress of the download and the install. When everything is done, click on finish. Select the system image that you just downloaded and then click on next. Give your device an, a descriptive name. In this case, we use the screen dimensions and also the name of the operating system for this device and then click finish. Now click on the green triangle that appears in the window and it'll ask you which device you want to launch. In the drop down menu, select the device that you just created. If you see this error message, then you're not able to run the emulator. This could be caused by one of two or three reasons. Perhaps the processor on your computer does not support this, or maybe you haven't installed KVM on your Linux device. Or, in this case, if you're running Android Studio inside of a virtual machine, your virtual machine software may not support running an emulator inside of a guest machine. If that's the case, then install Android Studio on your host machine and start over. If you're successful at creating your emulator, you'll see something like this. In the IDE, click on the green triangle at the top to build and run your application. It'll ask you to choose a running device. The emulator that you have running will probably be selected. Click on the OK button. And then the application that we just created loads inside of the emulator. If you click on the button that says go to next page, it will take you to the other page that says welcome to my second page. And that's all there is to it. I hope this was helpful. Thank you for watching.